Glory, glory, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now just to give him some thanks right now and give him the praise. Today is the day that the Lord has made. And I am so glad, so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. There's nothing too hard for our God. There's nothing too difficult for our God. There's nothing too hard for our God. There's nothing that he can't do. As long as you put your faith and your trust in him, he will get you through it. He will make a way when it seems like there's no way. Even when it's dark, God's still working. He's still working on your behalf right now today, my brothers. He's still working on your behalf right now today, my sisters. That's how great our God is. He is bigger than our problems. He is bigger than our circumstances. He is bigger than our situation. See, the enemy is a liar. He is a deceiver. He'll never tell you the truth. Yes, he is roaring like a lion right now, but he ain't going to bust a grape. Yes, he's trying to deceive you. Yes, he's trying to trick you. Yes, he's trying to put things in your head, but you got to block it in the mighty name of Jesus because our God is bigger. Our God is stronger. Our God is able. He, are, he has already destroyed every last one of our enemies that came against us. You might not know about it yet, but get ready, my brothers. Get ready, my sister, because you're going to receive a phone call soon. You're going to receive an email soon, and you're going to receive a text message on every last one of your enemies that came against you. You're going to know about it. Right now, they ain't hiding right now. Right now, they're embarrassed right now. Right now, they thought the grass was green on the other side. Right now, they thought they was winning. Right now, they thought the game was over with, but they didn't realize that our God will triumph over the enemies, the haters, and everyone that came against you in the mighty name of Jesus. So that's why I'm always thanking him. I'm always praising him and glorifying him because even when bad times come, I'm able to still thank and praise him. Even when things is coming against me, I'm still able to stand strong and thank and praise, and praise against him. See, that's what praise is all about, my brothers and my sisters. Every day ain't going to be no good day. Every day the sun is not going to shine. It's going to come some time rain going to come. It's going to come a time when thunder is going to come. It's going to come a time when lightning going to come. It's going to come a time when, you put, when, you, when you're in the, the worst storm that you've ever been in. But when you praise through that rain, when you praise in that storm, when you praise in the lightning, when you praise in the thunderstorm, you know your God is for you. You know your God is with you. You know your God is protecting you. It's because of your praise. Praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because our God is still on the throne. And he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. Because our God is bigger. Our God is amazing. Our God is faithful. He is so faithful, my brothers and my sisters. He will not disappoint you. He will not fail you. When he tell you. That he will never allow your enemy to ashamed you. That he will shame him. You better believe it. And I know right now today. That it seems like that the enemy is winning. God wanted to be that way. He wants the enemy to think they're winning. But they don't realize he got the ending of the story. He got a finale. He know the outcome. He know the outbreak. He know what's going to happen at the end. So they don't know the end. But God does. So if you don't see it yet, you continue to thank and praise him because it's on its way. And if you're really in love with Jesus, open up your mouth right now and give him a shout out of praise. Open up your mouth right now today and give him a shout out of glory in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, I come before you humbly right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. 
I thank you for this beautiful blessed day. I thank you for this opportunity, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you allow, allow myself, my brothers, my sister to come together to fellowship in your house today, to serve you in your house, to praise you in your house, to glorify in your house, to magnify and also to exalt your holy name in your house. Father God, your house is the house of prayer and praise. And God, that's what we are doing in your house. We are praying in your house. We are praising your house. And we have fellowship in your house. Father God, your word tells us in the book of Matthew, verse 18 and 19, where two or more gather in your name, hallelujah, that you are in the midst of things. So, Father God, I know that you're in the midst of our homes right now. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now. I know that you're in the midst of our telephones right now. I know that you're in the midst of our laptops, our desktops, our iPad, or whatever gadget that we have we're using. I know that you're in the midst of it right now, Father God. Father God, you have your way with us right now today, God. You lift us up right now today, God. You continue to cover us. You continue to protect us. You continue to shield us, Father God. Father God, thank you for allowing me to be the overseer of your flock right now today. Father God, we came in for a reason. We came in for a purpose, God. And God, we ain't leaving your house till we leave it full and satisfied. Father God, you know every last one I needs. You know every last one I concerns. And God, we know that you're going to fulfill them, God. Every last one of them to the T, God. Father God, we are so thankful right now. We are so grateful. We are so honored and blessed, God, just to be in your presence right now because, God, we know that your presence is real. Father God, you know every last one our, 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 our chance, our opportunity that we're going through, God. Father God, we cast all our problems, we cast all our anxieties on you right now today, Jesus, because there's nobody who cares for us more than you. And your word tells us that in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Father God, you have your way with us now. Father God, you lift us up right now. Father God, you speak to us right now. Father God, we stand firm on your words. We stand firm on your promises, God. God, we don't know when you're going to come. But God, we know that you're going to come through because you're on time, God. You're faithful, God. You're amazing, God. You're a loving, God. You're a God same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So, Father God, we lift these prayers up to you right now today in your house. And, Father God, we know that you're about to do something like you never done before. We know that you're about to show up. And we know that you're about to show out in your house. And, Father God, we are so thankful. We are so thankful. This will be part of your service today. In your holy, precious, mighty name, let the church come together and say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is worthy to be praised. Isn't he? Yes, he is. And I'm here today on behalf of all my brothers, all my sisters, even myself. Yes, we fell short today. We even dropped the ball today. We even fell short of his grace today. We're not perfect. Neither one of us. We all are going to come short in some type of way. So Heavenly Father God, we are here right now today to repent of our sins, to let you know what we did. Heavenly Father God, I ask of you, in your holy, precious, mighty name, to please forgive me, my brothers, my sisters, for every anything that we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, my brothers, my sisters, for every anything that we've done wrong that was not set right in your heart. Father God, please forgive me, my brothers, my sisters, for any and everything that we had in our mind, God, that was not part of your will, please forgive us. Wash us clean right now today, Jesus. Purify us through your blood right now today, Jesus. Clean us up as white as snow right now today, Jesus. And I want to say thank you, Jesus, for forgiving us for our sins. I want to say thank you, Jesus, for not remembering our sins anymore. I want to say thank you, Jesus, for taking the time out to listen and you hearing us out. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us a, se a second chance. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us another opportunity. I want to say thank you. My brothers want to say thank you. My sisters want to say thank you. In your holy, precious, mighty name. Amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I just can't thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I can't thank you enough for this word. I can't thank you enough for this anointing message. I just can't thank you enough for the air that we're able to breathe right now today. I can't thank you enough, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. I can't thank enough for our health and our strength. I can't thank enough, Father God, for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on our table, the clothing shoe that you have put on our back. I just can't thank enough, Father God, for your words and your promises. I just can't thank enough, Father God, for the Holy Spirit that is moving through us right now today. I can't thank enough for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. 
I just came thinking of Father God because you are a man that you should not lie, that you stand firm on your words, that you stand firm on your promises. I just came thinking of Father God because you're making a way out of no way. I just came thinking of Father God because you are a healer and you also are a provider. I just came thinking of Father God that we can always call, count, depend, and rely on you, Jesus. I just came thinking of Father God for how faithful you are, how amazing you are, how glorified you are, Jesus. I just came thinking of Father God how you move in mountains right now today on, a, on our behalf and we won't even see it or realize it. I just can't think of our blessing right now. I can't think of our breakthrough right now. I can't think of our nothing right now. I can't think of our deliverance right now. I can't think of our double portion right now. I can't think of our more than enough right now. I just can't think of the God for our new season that's coming to us right now. I just can't think of the open doors. I can't think of the door that you have closed. I can't think of the second chances. I can't think of the opportunity. I can't think of the rain. I can't think of the connection. I can't think of the resources. I can't think for the Boaz that we about to meet. I just can't think for the harvest that we about to reap this year in the mighty name of Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. Jesus, I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify your holy name the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you, I glorify you, I magnify your name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you, I can't thank you, I can't thank you. I can't thank you. I can't thank you. I just can't thank you enough. 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 Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough for who you are. I just can't thank you enough for what you stand for. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, what you're about to do in our life. I just can't thank you enough what you're about to do in this service today. I just can't thank you enough what you're about to do for my brothers today. I just can't thank you enough what you're about to do for my sisters today. I just can't thank you. I just can't thank you enough. And if you're ready for God's word, say, God, ready for your word, but I can't thank you enough. And let the church say, Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough. I want to talk about today how some of y'all don't realize what you got until it's gone. You don't understand how good your water is until that well runs dry. Some of you right now today, you're on the verge that you ain't gotta, you don't have no more water. Some of you right now today, your well has already ran dry. And you wish that you had that one more sip again. You wish that you can taste it one more time. You wish that you can look at it one more time. But in your mind, in your small little world, you thought the grass was greener on the other side. You thought that you was doing something when you stepped out. You thought that you were this big bad man. You thought that you, you thought that you were this big bad woman. You talked about it. You even bragged about it. You even try to humiliate the brother about it. You even try to humiliate the sister about it. You even told everybody what you was going to do. You even told everybody what you was about. You already you put it out there on Facebook. You put it out there on Instagram. You put it out there on Snapchat. You put it out there on Periscope. You put it out there on, on YouTube. You just put it out there. Not knowing it was consequences behind it. Not knowing it was turmoil behind that. A lot of you right now today. You don't realize what you got until it's gone. Then when somebody else got it, then you want to come back crying to him. You want to go back crying to her or you want to come back crying to that job. But I'm here today to tell somebody, I think it's a little bit too late for all that crying now. I think it's a little bit too late for all that begging now. I think it's a little bit too late for all that for all that whining now. But you weren't begging when you was doing it. You weren't crying when you was doing it. You weren't whining when you was doing it. You was bragging about it. You was boasting about it. You were so happy about it. You was dancing your two steps about it. But you didn't realize that your water was going to run dry. You didn't realize that well was going to be empty out sooner than later. It always looked good in the beginning. It looked good. It looked glamorous. It looked glittering. 
but you don't realize behind that glitter, behind that glamour, behind that sparkle, it's a different shade that's right behind it. That's the side that the enemy will never show you. That's the side that the enemy will never tell you. That's the side he will never put in front of you. He's going to show you what, what it look good. And you took the bait, my brothers. You took the bait, my sisters, like a dummy. You made the biggest dummy move that you ever made in your life. Now you're paying a price for it. Now your situation is different now. Now you ain't laughing no more. Now you ain't bragging about it no more. Now you ain't boasting about it no more. Now you're walking with your head down. Now your lip dragging the ground now. Because you thought the grass was green on the other side. You must thought that your water was never going to run dry. The moment that you step out, the moment, the moment that you thought that you was going to get away what you got away with, your water was running dry right then and now. How much water that you thought that you had in that well? How much glitter that you thought was going to glamour? How much sunshine that you thought was going to continue to shine on you? You thought you was going to prosper from that? You thought you were going to be this big bad man from that? Or you must thought you were going to be this big bad woman from that? You must thought that you were going to get away from it. You thought that you were going to get a reward from it. Then in real life, you took the biggest L of your life. You thought that you was winning. But one thing I know about God, he makes it so clear to every last one of us. It's a difference between winning and triumph. He wants you to think that you're winning. But God got to cut off time. The moment that you stepped out, your timer was already ticking then. God, have the, God has the authority. God has the final say so when he's going to click. That little button say, your time is up. Your water has ran dry. The sun is going down right now. What you thought was glitter and glamour, now you about to see the real doodle brown right now. You didn't see it in the beginning, but now you about to see it. And if you have not saw it yet, you better get ready. It's on its way. It's on its way. You don't have your time of laughing. You don't have your time of picking. You don't have your time to sit there bragging and boasting what you did. Your time is up. If you don't know by now, your time is up, my brothers. Your time is up, my sisters. How I know that? I'm glad you asked me. Can you please turn your Bibles to Isaiah 40? And we're going to read verse 8. That's Isaiah chapter 40, and we're going to read verse 8. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. See, that's how I know. He said the grass withers and the flowers fall. You must thought that flower was going to stand right there forever. You must have thought those leaves on that flower were going to stand right there. You don't realize we all have seasons. Your season is up of laughter. Your season is up for disrespecting. Your season is up because you thought that you left that brother, that you left that sister, you left that job, and you thought that you was winning. Your season is up of picking, ridiculing. You don't have your fun chit-chatting. You don't have your fun trying try, try to dog that brother out, trying to dog that sister out when they didn't deserve it. You broke their brother hard. You broke their sister hard. Now your season is up. So you didn't realize ain't, it's not pretty on the other side of that grass. See, the grass withers. So does the flower fades. Right now, that flower that you thought was right there looking so good, it's already fading from you right now today. And you wonder why things looking so gleaming now. You wonder why things not looking bright no more. You wonder why things not shining no more. You didn't realize what you thought was going to last. It only lasted for a brief little moment, my brothers and my sisters. Your season was up. The moment that you stepped out and you thought that you was doing something, the moment that you stepped out when you thought that you was winning, the timer was on. The grass was already withering then. The flower was already fading then. But the word of God, it stands. It don't move at all. 
His words stand on solid ground. And God said in Numbers 23 verse 19 that I'm a man I should not and I should not lie. I am a command to bless and I cannot change my words. I cannot change my promises even if I wanted to. So if the word of God say that the grass is going to, the grass is already withering and the flower fades, you better believe you don't know what you got until your water runs dry. A lot of you right now today, you didn't realize that you had the best thing going on in your marriage, my brother. You had a good woman. Woman was there for you. Broke her neck for you. No. You want to go chase after little Susan May. Because little Susan May said she can do this. Because little Susan May said she can do that. You didn't realize little Susan May time was up. Little Susan May had a time limit on her season. Her season is up with you. Now little Susan May got to find the next guy. Your grass didn't last long, did it, my brothers? Your flower did not last long, did it, my brothers? And the same thing go you too, my sisters. You had the best thing going on in the house. Your man broke his neck. You worked two and three jobs. Made sure that you had this. Made sure that you had that. He protected you. He provided. But no, you want to mess up this loser right here because he told you he can do this. And he told you that he can do that. But you didn't realize that loser had a time limit on him too. You didn't realize he had a time limit on this season. Now his season is up. Now you looking for him. Now you calling him. Now you emailing him. You text messaging him. And he telling you he tired. He's telling you he's busy. Best what he's telling you, your time is up. I don't want you no more. I got a wife at home. I got a girlfriend at the crib. I got a fiance. I was only with you just for a moment. I was only with you just for a heaven with this Jesus. I was only with you just for a season. I wanted the same thing that you wanted. Just to hit it and quit it. Spend a little time. You got wrapped up in me, but I never got wrapped up in you. Yes, I might have told you I had feelings, but I really didn't have deep feelings for you. I might have told you I cared about you, but I was never in love with you. Oh, help me, God. So now... You don't know what you got until your water ran dry. Now your well is run dry. Now you're looking stupid. Now you don't know what to do. Now you don't know if you're going to go back home to the brother. You don't know if you're going to go back home to the sister. You don't know if that brother wants you no more. You don't know if that sister wants you no more. Now you're knocking at that same job, begging for the job back. And the job say that that position is already filled. It was filled last week. You should have stayed here. I didn't tell you to leave. You thought that you was leaving this job and you bragged about going to the other job. You talked talked about the job like the job was dirt. You didn't realize that one day that you's going to need a job again. You talked about that brother so bad, you didn't realize that you's going to need him again one day. You talked bad about that sister so bad, you didn't realize that you's going to need her one day. You talked so bad about that friend, you didn't realize that you's going to need that friend one day. You talked so bad about that family member, they didn't realize that you's going to need that family member one day. You talked so bad about that in-law, then realize that you's going to need that in-law one day. You talk so bad about the people in the church, then realize that you're going to need that church one day. You talk so bad about that dog, now that dog don't want to be your best friend. You talk so bad about that cow, now that cat don't want to play with you no more. Now, you just up creek right now. You don't know how good your water is until your well run dry. You don't know what you got until it's gone. Until somebody else got it and they live in that La Vida La Loca, now you're mad. And all things you're going to say, that used to be mine. That used to be mine. What did I do? What you did, you listened to the wrong voice. That's the first thing you did. The second thing you did, you listened to the wrong show. That's the second thing you did. The third thing you did, you went on your own understanding, thinking that you was doing better. God never told you to leave him. God never told you to leave her. God never told you to pack up the move across town. You did that. God gave every last one of us free will, but you thought that your will was a real, real will. But you didn't realize that your will was going to run dry the moment that you did it. The word of God stands forever. When he said that grass is going to wither, it's going to wither. When he said that flower is going to fade, it's going to fade. These are my words. These are the word of God. And God, this has been spoken over 2,000 years ago, and it still stands right now today. It have not moved. It have not budged. A lot of you right now today, you are looking like a fool. And if, you, if you're not looking like a fool, it's on its way. My brothers, my sisters, what the word of God says, sit still and know that I'm God. 
I know right now today it seems like they winning, but you don't realize their grass is already withering. You don't realize their flowers are already fading. Don't don't they ain't gonna tell you that the person they left you for is already left left them. They ain't gonna tell you that because they want you to know. That's why they ain't hiding. They gonna leave a good man, a good woman, to go mess with a loser. Now that loser don't want nothing to do with them. It was all good in the beginning. Don't even realize they season is up because their timer was up. That grass is not green on the other side. Now they're trying to go back to the pasture land. See, our pasture land always going to stand green because we stand firm on the word of God. And as long as we stand firm on the word of God, our pasture land always going to stand green. See, they were standing on their word. That's why their word turned brown. That's why their flower faded. In the beginning, it was happy. In the beginning, it was joyful. Now, as time went on, they said, oh my God, what I did now? I made the biggest mistake in life. How am I going to get out of this situation right now? What did I do? I thought I was leaving my husband, trying to separate from him, trying to divorce him, to go mess with this guy right here. Because he told me everything that looked good sounded good. And it did, but you didn't realize his voice and this image was already withering the moment that you stepped out on your husband. His flower was already fading the moment that you stepped out on his husband. The same thing, my brother, that when you stepped out on your wife, when you thought that you was leaving her for another woman, when you thought that you were going to separate and divorce her, you didn't realize that she was withering the moment that you stepped out. You didn't realize that her flower was fading the moment that you stepped out, the moment that you left that good job to go to another job, when God said sit right there, you didn't realize the moment that you walked in that door and you clocked in, that job was withering and that flower was fading too. The moment you did it, and if it has not happened yet, it's on its way. You better believe that. Don't think that God's going to allow you to continue to stay what you at and think that you're going to win and think that that grass is going to stay green and you think that flower is still going to stand like it is. It's, it's withering right now. That flower is fading right now because your season is up, because your time is up. God never told you to do that in the first place. My grandmother's always to say that. You don't know how good your water is until that well runs dry. You don't know what you got until it's gone. You better be appreciative what you got. Because I tell you what, there's somebody out there today really want that brother. There's somebody out there right now that's praying for their sister. There's somebody out there right now that they want that job. You might not want him. You might not want her. But there's somebody been praying for him. There's somebody been praying for her, and they very good looking too. We're gonna treat them well and treat them good, treat them like a king and treat them like a queen. There's somebody that's gonna go to that job and they're gonna perform at that job and they're gonna get promoted at that job. Now your well has run dry. Now you got nothing in there. Everybody you thought was down with you has ran away from you now. Now they laughing at you right now. Now you the laughing stock. In the beginning, that brother was the laughing star. In the beginning, that sister was the laughing star. Now, you the laughing star. Now, the jokes is on you. There's no more water in your world, is it? You didn't realize how brown that grass was now, did you? You didn't realize that flower had faded so quick now, did you? Now, you chasing where you at. I thought we was going to be together. He said, I ain't never told you that. That was in your mind. That was in your mind. I didn't tell you to leave your husband. I didn't tell you to divorce your husband. I didn't tell you to separate from your husband. I didn't tell you to leave your wife. I didn't tell you to separate from your wife. I didn't tell you to divorce your wife. I didn't tell you to leave that job. You did it thinking you are not going to be something. You did it thought you are not going to be an item. You thought because you did it because you thought that you were going to win. You did it because you thought that you were going to prosper. The word of God said no weapon. Hallelujah. No weapon form against you should ever prosper. It should never work. The word of God said he will never allow your enemy to shame you that he will shame them. Right now, they're looking to shame. If they're not ashamed, it's on its way. It's on its way. I don't know who I'm talking to right now today. I know somebody's been saying, man, the minister sure talking to me right now. No, that's God talking to you right now. You know what you did. He just speaking through me to speak to you. That's all what it was. 
It happened to me before I thought the grass was green. It didn't last long. The moment I left one job, go to another job, it lasted three days. The moment I went to that job, I didn't realize that the job had already withered on me. Didn't realize that the flower had faded on me until the third day and said, we don't need you no more. Then I was looking stupid. Didn't have a job for going on for a month and a half. Long time without no paycheck. Long time without no dough in your pocket. I did it thinking the grass was green. Now you did it because you thought the grass was green. Now you better realize your water has ran dry. And if this word, and if this message for you, give God some thanks and praise and glory in the house of the Lord for it right now. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today by us praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, or leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is with us by ALT. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face before. Prayer help. Prayer changes things. Father God, I was here today to speak a word. I spoke a word what you wanted me to tell them today, God. Father God, some people don't realize what they got until their well has run dry. Some people don't realize what they got until it's gone. God, I done exactly what you want me to do. I spoke the way how you want me to speak, God. So now, God, you do your part right now. You know the brothers right now who's going through it. You know the sisters right now who's going through it. And God, I know that you're going to come through for that brother. I know that you're going to come through for that sister because they didn't deserve the way they got mistreated by that brother or that sister or anyone who came against them. This serving minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' holy mighty name. God bless you. Amen.